Hi. Oh, this is a big topic. Um, and I want to speak to it. Um, I see this so often, um, a lot. And I've had this experience myself. And I think it's something that most of us are very unaware of. There's so many women that I work with and that are friends of mine um, and that I can relate to who go through life, you know, being really um, strong and resilient and confident and all these things. And still so many of us find ourselves never really feeling loved. Um, we might find ourselves in relationships. We might even find ourselves in some good relationships if you're lucky. Um, hi, Rebecca. Um, but so many of us still, even in these relationships, don't ever really feel loved in that way that we're looking to, that warm, safe feeling of love and being met, really connected. And whilst there could can be a myriad of reasons for this, one of the very common reasons that I see, particularly in very strong and confident, successful, you know, amazing kick-ass women, is, um, a tra is trauma, is relationship trauma. And it's something that most of us aren't aware of. And, you know, how this shows up is our inability to really fully, truly expose ourselves. And it's understandable, you know, you can be very much excused for this behavior because when you have a trauma around something, then, you know, we skew with our way of being with it. Now, a lot of women um, that I work with, most of the women that I work with are very evolved women who've done a lot of work. And so, it becomes even more tricky because we feel like, well, I know, I know myself, I've done lots of healing and, you know, to be, to really be loved, to really, truly be loved by somebody and to feel loved by somebody, we have to fully be, at, we have to be able to fully expose our true, um, tender feeling self. And a lot of the women who come to me initially to work with me, um, feel like and look like they do know what they're feeling and they do share their feelings but more often than not when we um when we have relationship trauma we find that we we don't do that we shut down and we protect ourselves we become very independent in the world and we can do everything for ourselves and then when we do a bit of work we realize oh we need to know our feelings and so we need to be able to share that with people but what most people end up doing is sharing the idea of our feelings so we kind of um, mentalize it we make sense of it and we talk about our feelings that's you know that's a, one step away from just being shut down entirely so you know if you feel like well hang on a second i don't feel that deep sense of being loved in life yes i'm strong yes i'm independent um and yeah i don't really share my feelings much or maybe you think all of those things but i do share my feelings what what is often the case um we share what we think about our feelings we can often um, have a feeling think about it and then wrap it up and talk about it but what is required of us in order to be truly loved and to feel truly loved we actually have to be able to expose that tender underbelly that really tender underbelly of our real feelings hi josephine thanks for coming and that means being vulnerable, you know, and that means sharing our feelings in their embodied state. So being able to embody our feelings, not even necessarily talking about them, but actually embodying our feelings and then exposing that or sharing that with another person. Now, if we've had relationship trauma, then it's almost impossible to do that. We've shut down, we've had the experience that it's not safe to do so. So we hide that away and that protects us and enables us to be independent and enables us to be, to feel safe um, on our own um, and in the world. But what it disables us from is being able to feel really, truly loved because it's only when that soft underbelly of your feeling self is seen, met, received, accepted, that's when we have that real connection. Uh, so there, we've seen a real, we have seen a kind of um, resurgence in the world of the understanding of vulnerability and people are starting to get the idea that we need to be able to be vulnerable. But unfortunately, um, what's happening is the other end of the scale is, hi, Soraya, sweetheart, thanks for coming. Um, the other end of the scale is we feel like, okay, let's be vulnerable. So uh, people, we, we need to be careful that we don't just go jump off the deep end and then just expose our soft underbelly to anyone at anywhere at any time. There needs to be appropriate 
spaces and appropriate times, appropriate people um, where we expose this soft underbelly of our vulnerability, which, which I really want to be clear is the embodiment of your feelings, not just the talking about your feelings. And it's, it's difficult to do. Most of us feel like we're in touch with them, but, but gen generally we're not. And so the question I guess then is, um, well, actually, let me just backtrack for a moment. Looking at the um, the tendency to overshare now, you know, for a lot of people, it, you know, it's either one way or the other, nothing at all, or expose. Let's just expose to everything and everyone. And this is not the way to do it. Understandably, though, that this is happening because we haven't received training in how to do it. Now, the real thing that we need to learn is the very skillful art of learning how to be vulnerable and be safe and distinguish the moments and the times when it's appropriate. And this is actually a fundamental aspect of human relating, but something that most people haven't got the skills for. And this is because um, the majority of us have relationship trauma. Now, <clears throat> how can you tell if you have relationship trauma? Well, most of us do. <laughs> um, unless you grew up in a perfect situation that was safe and kind and warm and loving and you were protected from the cultural narrative um, of what it means to be in the world and in relationship then you you know there are chances you have relationship trauma and unless you're in a really um, if you find yourself very easily and naturally being loved and feeling loved and safe in relationship and knowing the difference and how to be with that you know, if you if you don't have that experience, then the chances are you have relationship trauma too. Um, it's it's something that when we when we sustain that trauma, we won't be able to have deep, connected relationships where we really feel loved and safe. But the good news is that once we uh, address that trauma then we actually can start to have these relationships. And I know this for a fact, I've done this with myself and lots and lots of other women. And we see that, hello, Carity. Oh, so nice to see you. <laughs> um, I've, seen, I've seen people radically transform their ability to be seen, felt and loved by addressing this trauma. And the majority of the work is done when we first recognize it. That, that is the really the biggest part of it. Um, however, it, it is essential to address and I'm seeing more and more people waking up to this now. And the good news is there is something that we can do about it, but we have to do something about it. We have to recognize it, take responsibility for it and make the shifts and changes. Um, the only other thing that I, I'd like to touch on here is that you know, there was kind of an old idea that part of the reason for women not being able to feel fully met and loved in their um, in their vulnerability, Carity. Oh, wonderful, Carity. You are an absolute amazing woman. A very long time ago client of mine who did my program is that say, telling us that she's finally surrendered now and is in the most loving relationship. Ah, oh, you're the best. And I know you worked really hard at it and you're a, an absolute uh, queen. Thanks for sharing that, that makes me so happy. I love hearing from people who've made the shifts and are there with us. Um, so yeah, this is, it's, it's not about men not being strong enough to hold the space for us. It's not about that. Um, it really is about us it's about us being able to heal the past and heal those programs that have showed us the only way to be safe in the world is to really um put up some walls and and protect ourselves from the world by not exposing our embodied feelings um and changing that and and really recognizing that i'm not i'm not talking about talking about your feelings. I'm talking about the shared embodiment of your feelings, um, which is a slightly different thing. <laughs> well, actually, it's a radically different thing. Um, I might leave it there for today. If you want to hear more about this, though, come and join. If you haven't joined the Physics of Love and Relationship group, come and join. It's a private group where we can have conversations about this kind of stuff. And I do also have coming up my um, masterclass 
my monthly monthly masterclass where we'll be talking about these kinds of things too. So, oh, my mum's here too. Hi, mum. <laughs> so, um, yeah, maybe I'll put the links down in the comments. And certainly if you've worked with me before, this masterclass is a great way to stay in touch and to keep upgrading your skills and sharing. Particularly at the moment, I'm not advertising it publicly, which means that um, there's a really good chance that you get to actually, for me to work with you one-on-one -on -one within the group. And you can also send, um, before the session, you can send me questions that I will answer um, anonymously or I can speak to you specifically you just let me know in the session so if you've worked with me before it's a great way to stay in touch and keep updating and keep getting connected with me personally and if you've never worked with me before it's a really great way to get a, a in-depth taste of what it's like to do the work and it's the first session is free and if you choose to join after that it's super cheap I think it's like $17 a session so I'm keeping it really accessible Thank you for listening. Uh, this is a really, really important topic and it's really at the basis of where I end up going with most of the women that do my work because, you know, I tend to work with really strong, independent, kick-ass, incredible women and generally this is one of the little kind of hurdles that we need to work with. So have a think about it for yourself and have a... Have a Consider if perhaps this might be, be something that's happening for you. And if you aren't sure, come over and, and, and ask some questions and we can help to work it out. Sending you oceans of love.